Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. I think it's about time to do another historical build. I know I've been working on a Knights Templar thing, but it's really not anywhere near historically accurate in terms of the things that I'm kind of throwing together. And I thought, why not try and attempt something a little bit more to a time period? And what kind of came to mind was the Conquistador helmet, or what it's actually called, the Morion helmet. Um, it originated in Spain, and I kind of wanted to tackle that one. I've been wanting to for a while. It's kind of a very unique thing. It's got like the the uh, little brim that kind of comes down over your head, and then the ridge or the crest that goes basically from the front to the back. And I think it looks pretty neat. Some of them were very ornate and detailed, and I wanted to like use hot glue and just a cake mold and see what I could do with it. So today we are building a Morion helmet from history. Probably not as accurate as I want it to be, but it's still gonna be fun to build. Let's get to build. I'm gonna start out by making the cap of the head. On my template, I try and make things as simple as I can and keep the pieces as few as possible. They are always free and in the description of the video that they go along with. Download it, cut it out, and then trace it onto your materials. I'm using six millimeter EVA for this build like most mask and helmet builds because it's thick enough to support the structure and thin enough to take a curve if I need it. Trace the pattern label side up, then for the opposite side, I put the pattern label side down and trace it again. Typically parts with darts in them, the big V-shape cuts on the pattern, need a little heat forming to help them form better to the shape. This step allows the foam to get closer to its final end result and decreases the amount of pull on the seams. Heat up the foam on both sides and push it over some round object. If you can't find a back porch light cover like I have, you can use a bowl, a round vase, a, a ball, your knee, a fist, somebody with a big nose, anything round will do, I guess. Apply contact cement to all the edges, give it a few minutes to set up, and then using the registration marks, stick the darts together. Once you have all the darts closed up on both halves, join the two halves together. I have a ginormous head, so you might need to size it down a little bit. I did a video a while back that I'll link in the video somewhere here that walks you through step by step on how to size your builds to fit you. At six foot three, 250 pounds, and a 24 inch around head, most of the things I build are built to fit my body and um, probably a bit bigger than the normal person. The brim of the helmet glues on the bottom edge of the recently made cap. 
you'll notice that there's an orange area on my template. This is just to show you that there's an overlay in this area instead of gluing it to the edge like I typically do. The blue highlight signifies a 45 degree angle cut inward from that edge. My cover letter on my templates explains all these markings, lists out all the materials, size foam you need, all that, and gives other helpful tips for assembly. The top ridge or crest is made out of 10 millimeter EVA since we're gonna simplify this just a little bit. Typically these are more wedge shaped. I made mine a little easier so that it's just a flat piece and easy just to glue on. I knew that I was gonna glue on some extra details later that would thicken up the parts, especially on the base with some of the trim, so I didn't really worry about it. After you cut it out, smooth over the edges to kind of help the transition, you just glue it on with contacts. Submit. Now the fun part, squeezing hot glue into cape molds a half dozen times to get enough copies so that you can cover the surface of your helmet with details. I stumbled on this by accident searching for resin molds. These little cake molds I think are technically made for like fondant work on cakes, but they work well with hot glue too. You could speed up the process with some upside down cans of air or a couple of ice cubes. I push my nozzle down onto the surface first, then once it's all filled in that area, I back fill the rest of it. This limits air bubbles. I like using the hot glue for several reasons over other materials. It's cheaper than resin or foam clay sometimes. It sets up pretty fast and it's flexible without having to worry about it cracking on you. If you buy glue sticks in bulk, you can get them for like pennies per stick and most craft stores keep them in stock, which is nice. They also come in tons of different colors. I, I buy mine on Amazon mostly, but if I need to, I can run down to the store and get some. I don't really have a game plan for placement. I just kind of hold it up up in an area and try and figure out where pieces can kind of jigsaw together and what looks best by eye. Some other nice things about hot glue option is that you can easily trim pieces off, use the material as an adhesive, fill in gaps with it, and use a nozzle of the glue gun to smooth over your transitions. You do have to deal with the little webby things that kind of come off of the glue gun when you pull back your, your sticks, but I found that you can easily get rid of those with a quick blowtorch hit or even running a heat gun across it melts them down onto your surface.
Just wanted to point out that my skulls on this helmet were pulled from some Evil Ted Cos molds. You should definitely pick up some if you have not already. I'm constantly finding new ways to use this stuff to add cool details. Mostly putting awesome details on my builds with little effort or skill needed. No, this is not a paid sponsorship. I just really like Evil Ted. He's pretty awesome. And if you've never watched any of his videos, I wonder what's wrong with you. Not to mention the fact that if you buy these molds, you're supporting Evil Ted and allowing him to continue putting out awesome some stuff for the rest of us, so please go buy some. Two coats of Plasti Dip. Surprisingly enough, the Plasti Dip stuck pretty well to the hot glue. I was kind of worried about that for a second. I'm using some silver rub and buff and a chip brush to dry brush on the paint. I've had a couple people ask me this question, ask me why it's called a chip brush. It's technically because these brushes are not intended for painting. They're used in machine work to brush away metal or wood chips, hence chip brush. I like using them for painting because the bristles are spread far enough apart that it kind of gives a more sporadic random spread than a regular paintbrush does. And they're dirt cheap. Add some gold accents to the details. I used a gold acrylic paint pen for some of it, like the teeth and those little bitty, tiny dots on some of the details. But I quickly found out that that was gonna take me forever, so I switched over to some gold rub and buff for the bigger scroll work. No, you don't have to blink twice or think something's wrong with me. After painting the gold on, I was like, I, I don't wanna dirty this thing up. So there is no rust, there is no wash over the top of it. I know it felt weird to me too, but I I really like the way that the paint job worked out. <laughs> I saw a lot of fancy armored straps and other accessories that they added to secure this bucket to the soldier's head. I contemplated trying to build those things out and was like, I think I've got like a cool looking belt that I can use. So I looked in my scrap bin of leather parts and found this belt that I bought at a thrift store for a dollar several years ago. At the time, I didn't know what I was going to use it for or even if this weird thing was going to be going with anything that I would build, but I bought it. I think it kind of works. There's that nice braided detail on my edge and this has braided belt within the leather wrapped on so I think it works pretty cool and the buckle seems to go well with it also. Makes me feel like it's a little bit more authentic when I use some real parts like some leather instead of trying to make it out of foam. Same concept as most strapping jobs you see me do. I sandwich the piece of the belt between the helmet and a small piece of EVA foam. <laughs> And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of like historical armor 
And I spend a lot of time on my vacations in museums looking at stuff. I know nothing that I build is ever 100% accurate, but I do enjoy the history of stuff and learning stuff about things that I thought I already knew about. Uh, and this helmet was no exception to that, but I definitely think it looks cool. And the use of a cake mold and an Evil Ted mold, little skulls, uh, to kind of tie it together and put the icing on the cake, as it were, uh, is just, it kind of works. I also love the fact that this random thrift store belt that I bought several years ago that's been sitting there staring at me going, where am I ever going to use this for, has a purpose and it kind of matches with the braided rope that's on the top, so it just kind of worked out. Maybe you will try and make one of these helmets yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to bring something historically into the future and make it probably a lot lighter than the actual ones are. Yeah, I couldn't imagine having to do that. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props kind of feel like that ridge would be awesome for like headbutting somebody so um I'm just gonna just gonna strap this on you know and uh i'm coming at you bro full force all right you ready you ready <laughs> If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see me continue to build things like this, please consider joining these people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.